What's up? It's almost migraine, Jen. You can probably already see it in my face because you guys are even sharper than me. Today, we are going over the paperwork that you need to fill out if you want to fly with your service animal. Nailed it. I'm in such a good mood. I'm so happy. And I don't remember what phase of migraine has euphoria as a symptom, but getting euphoria and getting giggly are two really weird symptoms of migraine. Now I'm really confused, but we're gonna do fine on this form. I'm just turning into migraine gen. There is still time. We're gonna quickly go over some legal stuff, but disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer. I'm just migraine gen. That's a call. I'm talking about domestic flights, which is within the United States. Per federal law, airlines are required to allow you to have your service animal accommodate you. There are exceptions, and they are listed on the website. I'm sure I will have another video someday listing the exceptions. Not the point right now. Migraine Gen does this a lot. The ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, is the main on-the-ground service dog laws entity here in the United States. The ACAA and the DOT deal with service dogs that are in the air. ACAA stands for Air Carrier Access Act, and DOT is the Department of Transportation. Per the DOT's website, transportation.gov, airlines may require this DOT form that we're going to go over, attesting to the animal's health, behavior, and training. If the animal is going to be on a flight that's more than eight hours, the airline may also require you to fill out a form that the animal can either not relieve itself for that long or it can relieve itself in a sanitary manner. Sanitary manner. Makes sense. Long flight, they want you to sign a form that your dog will not pee on the flight or if your dog does pee, it'll be sanitary. Otherwise, this form and that's it. That's all they can require. Per the ADA, Airplane staff people, who, what are they called? Oh, migraine gen. Word finding. Migraine symptom. Flight attendants. They can ask the two questions, but that's it. They're not flight attendants when they're in the terminals, though. What are they called? I guess just staff. They can ask you the two questions. Airlines might actually require you to have other forms if there are requirements for, to comply with requirements on transport of animals by a federal agency, a US territory, or a foreign jurisdiction. So if it would like be against the law not to, then the airline can do it. Okay, wow, that's helpful. There are lots more rules, but in terms of forms, that's the rules. They cannot require your service dog training certificate from the school that your service dog went to because that's a scam. They can't require a service dog registration with the city where you live or something like that. Nothing, nothing of that sort is going to be legitimate. They can't require training logs or documentation or a sign off from a trainer, something like that. That's not going to be legal for them to ask. This sheet is what is legal. I need to issue a warning, and this is at the very top of the form. It is a federal crime, as in extremely not cool and you get in a ton of trouble, so don't freaking do it. To make materially false, fictitious, or fraudulent statements, entries, or representations, I am not having a good time with my tongue, knowingly and willfully on this form, to secure disability accommodations provided under regulations of the U.S. Department of Transportation. In other words, it's a federal crime to lie on this sheet just to be able to bring your dog on the plane. So don't. U.S. Department of Transportation Service Animal Air Transportation Form. If you literally just type it into Google, pops right up. Super easy to find. I like to fill it out online because my fingers are not that good and online a lot of it will autofill. Like you fill in your dog's name and it'll autofill. But today together we're gonna go over each line so we can talk about how to fill it out. The handler's name, I'm Jen, and phone number. Sorry guys, we're gonna leave that blank. Under that is the service animal user's name if different from handler. I don't know what that's for. Miners? People maybe who are unable to hold the leash for themselves. People who have a service animal and a service human with them. And their phone number. Service animal handler's email. So I put my email here at Gmail. I assume you are on Gmail. Animal's name, 
Buddy. Description of the animal, including weight. Golden Retriever. It's good to put your breed, the weight, any super identifying markings, and that he's probably happy. And that's it for the handler information section. After that, we move on to the animal health. First checkbox of two, we have, insert his name, is vaccinated for rabies. They want to know the date of their last rabies vaccination and when that vaccination expires, which is sometimes one year or sometimes three, in my experience. Maybe others. I'll put Buddy's name. Buddy had his last September 12th, and it's, what year was that, 22? And it's a three-year shot, so that's gonna be due in 2025. So I'll put 0925, and I will check that box to attest that Buddy is vaccinated for rabies. And then the second checkbox for that is to check that they don't have anything communicable that might be harmful to other people or other animals. Specifically, the wording says, to my knowledge, Buddy does not have fleas or ticks or a disease that would endanger people or other animals. So I'll add his name, I'll check the box, and underneath that, they need your veterinarian's name and your veterinarian's phone number, but they do not need your veterinarian's signature, just the information. Check, and that is it for the animal health section. In the next section, the DOT asks you to attest to the animal's training and behavior, because since they are flying as a service animal, not as a pet, they are expected and required to be very highly trained for public access. Emotional support animals are not service animals. They're no longer required to allow access with emotional support animals because they got a little bit out of control with the peacocks and weird emotional support animals that people were bringing. So now we are back to service animals, dogs. Don't know about the mini horse thing. Ask not migraine gen. Let's go on to animal training and behavior. Buddy has been trained to do work or perform tasks to assist me with my disability. Check. If you can't check that box, why are you even filling out this form? That's literally definition of service dog. Then you have to put the name of the animal trainer or the training organization and their phone number. Now I am an owner trainer. I know a lot of you guys in my audience are as well. So what do you do if you're the owner and you're the one who trained it? You just put your own name. And then I also went through a training organization online. I did the virtual training stuff online because the power of Zoom these days, am I right? So I usually put myself because I'm the person who actually did the hands-on work, the hands-on training, that 120 hours. But I did it through this organization and using their expertise. So I put a slash and then I put like, I'm gonna put trainer gainer. I'm making it up. Just like I made up Animal Center. It's generic for you. And their phone number, which could be anything. I'm gonna make up an area code because it's an online thing and I don't know what a phone number is because I don't know where they are, so 007 is going to be my area code. Bingo. Next field, Buddy has been trained to behave in a public setting. Check. If you can't check that box, why are you even filling out this form? I need to take a break. Oh, yeah. Are you looking at me? Okay. All right, next box. I understand that a properly trained dog remains under the control of its handler. I understand that a properly trained dog does not act aggressively by biting, barking, jumping, lunging, or injuring people or other animals. It also does not urinate or defecate on the aircraft or in the gate area. Check. I know this feels like such common knowledge, but guys, these poor airlines have been needing to deal with animals actually doing this stuff all over there properly for way too long. So if you are going to bring your service animal onto an aircraft, Please be respectful of everybody and make sure your dog is ready to behave on that aircraft and in the gate area. I feel like the airport is really the ultimate service dog test. There is stuff everywhere. Everybody and their mother has a rolly suitcase 
There is food everywhere and people are dropping crumbs everywhere and leaving wrappers on tables and then other people zoom by and then the napkins fall down on the floor. So then you have to walk by all of these food napkins all the time. I mean, there are people cleaning up all the time too, but you know, it just, it's hectic. It's chaotic. And then he goes through security and people are with the bins like, bum, 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 bum. And your dog is just like, what the heck? Like there's so much stuff going on. So if you don't have a well-trained dog and your dog's not ready to deal with all of that, don't bring him to the airport. And also, other dogs, pretty much guaranteed you're going to run into other service animals and even other pets who are at the airport because other people are traveling too. And sometimes pets are allowed to go on the airplane for a fee. So not all of the animals who are on the airplane are going to be service animals. There are gonna be other dogs there too. When you're in line, you know you're like in line with the going back and forth bendy things. What are those? We've literally had to stand in line with another team standing in line like and we're passing each other in the in the thing while everybody has a suitcase and everyone's bonking into stuff. So yeah, make sure that your dog is trained. And then this form, the point of this form is that you are signing that you are attesting to this. It's legit now. Got your name on it. Don't give your name shame. Next. I understand that if Buddy shows it, <laughs> it I'm going to say he shows that he has not been trained to behave properly in public, then the airline may treat Buddy as a pet and follow their pet policy with him. The airline may treat Buddy as a pet by charging a pet fee and requiring Buddy to be transported in an FAA approved pet carrier. So if Buddy misbehaves, they are allowed to call, hey, that's not a service animal, we're not going to give service animal rights, or at least He's not behaving like a service animal, so for all intents and purposes, he's not safe enough. You know? No. Okay, cool. Check. I do understand that, so check. To the best of my knowledge, Buddy has not behaved aggressively or caused serious injury to another person or dog. Check. If you cannot check the box above, please explain. So there is a place where you can write in an answer if your dog has behaved aggressively or caused serious injury to another person or dog. And that concludes this section. It goes from here down to here. That is attesting to your animal's training and behavior. The last section is called other assurance. It's just two more boxes, sorry, three more boxes. I understand that Buddy must be harnessed, leashed, or tethered at all times while in the aircraft and while in the airport, yes. There are times when you're out in public with your service dog and they're allowed to be off leash if being on leash interrupts their ability to do work or perform the tasks, but they want you to sign off that you are going to keep your service dog leashed. Let me clarify on the last one. Leashed or harnessed or tethered, you're attached in some way is what they're saying. I understand that if Buddy causes damage, then the airline may charge me to pay to fix that damage. As long as they would also charge the same to an able-bodied person who did that same damage. There is a little clause in here which is great to make sure that they're not discriminating against you for having a disability. So if they would also charge other passengers without disabilities to repair the similar kinds of damage, then they are allowed to charge you to repair damage done by your service dog. Check. And last but not least, here to scare you. I am signing an official document of the US Department of Transportation. Legal. My answers are true to the best of my knowledge. I understand that if I knowingly make false statements on this document, I can be subject to fines and other penalties. Check that last box. Signature of the service animal handler and the date. I had Buddy sign this one for me. He handles himself. I'm gonna be handling the toddlers. I have a couple more notes to tell you and then I'll let you go. But this is important. Wrote them on stickies because they're important. All right, some airlines have a service dog pass so you can bypass this. I guess it's like the security pre-check sort of deal but for service animals instead of for security so that you won't have to fill out the form every time which is really cool if you travel a lot. And last when to fill out the form and when to submit it. How to submit it. Nausea. 
and now my heart's racing. I moved, I did the, I moved my head around a lot. Buddy and I are flying so that I can get three blood patches for my CSF leak, which I'm very excited about. I will stick a card up here so that you can check out those videos talking about going to get my procedure. That is why we're filling out this paperwork. So some airlines do require you to fill out this form and submit it by email or on their online thing. You just check your airline's website 48 hours in advance, for example, ahead of your flight. Some airlines do prefer to have your documentation ahead of time so they can approve it and get back to you that you're approved and then you're all set for your flight. What I do is I fly Southwest and with Southwest the policy is that I have to go to the ticket counter with Buddy and give them the paperwork and they print out the boarding pass there with a little note on it that says SVAC service and S something on the boarding pass and then they'll highlight it yellow or some I don't know migraine gen migraine gen but the important part for you is with Southwest I have to print it out and have it filled out and it has to be filled out after the date that I purchased the plane tickets and then I bring it to the ticket counter so when you bring the form depends on the airline. You have to check your airline's policy. So if you haven't seen it already, I have another service dog video about the TSA security checkpoint, going through that with your service animal, getting your scans done and the metal detector and whatever with your service dog. So I will put a card up for that at the end of this video so you can watch that and I'll see you next time.